Hello, Star Wars fans. Today is going to be my breakdown and review of Bad Batch Season 3, Episode 4. In particular, I'm going to look at 10 questions that are either raised or that they remind us need to be answered before this season, or really should I say this series, comes to an end. So my hope is that we will get all of these answered before the final episode, which honestly won't be that long from now. So lots to look forward to. All right, there will be spoilers, lots of spoilers. So make sure you've seen the episode first, but assuming you have, then let's dive right in and see what we can find out. Don't forget we have the February contest. Be a subscriber, leave a comment. You might win a book or a steel book. Best of luck. And we have the membership option in case you want to help me with my goal of doing this full time one day. You get all kinds of cool perks like behind the scenes videos, custom emojis, etc. But honestly, no matter how you support the channel, it's all greatly appreciated. Leaving comments, liking videos, subscribing, it all goes a long way. So thank you so much. All right, so question number one. Will Tantus be able to continue the cloning experiments after this season is done? I bring up this question because Omega says we need to get the nav reader online to extract the coordinates to Tantus. And of course, she wants to go back and rescue the other prisoners. Well, they're not able to because Crosshair says we got to get out of here and the computer shuts down. So that means Tantus is still a mystery, the location. So is it possible that one of the storylines from Legends, one of my favorite storylines, where they find Luke's severed hand and actually create a Luke clone, will they be able to pull that from Legends into a main canon? And I bring it up because, in Legends at least, this happened on Tantus. And it happened around 9 to 11 ABY, which is right around the time of the Mandalorian movie. So, wow, wouldn't that be cool if they bring this storyline forward? And in fact, if Tantus still remains a secret when this series ends. Very interesting. All right, question number two. How exactly did Nala say no to destroy Omega samples? Remember, Hemlock says, I never understood your attachment to the young clone. But now it's clear why you kept her so close. So, yeah, we, we know that Nala Say knew something was up with Omega, which is why she was destroying the samples. What we don't know is why. Why did Nala Say know that? Did Nala Say actually create Omega? Did, intentionally? Did someone else create Omega and Nala Say found out about it? I mean, this is a big mystery about basically the origin of Omega and why exactly Nala Say knew. All right, question number three. Why does Omega's sample even allow an M count transfer to begin with? So Hemlock says, suspicious that all the samples you've taken from Omega never yielded results, yet one tested by Emery indicated a positive M count transfer. Well, I mean, we know where this is going, right? It's going to put this somehow in somehow Palpatine returns. It's going to explain Palpatine. It's going to explain Snoke. But why? What is it about Omega specifically that allows her blood, her blood sample, to create this M count transfer that was successful. Big mystery. I really hope we get this answer. I'm kind of fearing that we won't, and they're going to kick the can down to maybe Omega appearing in live action uh, in uh, a Mandalorian season or maybe Ahsoka. But still, I, I hope we get this answer. I'd really, really like to know. All right, question number four. What will be the fate of Nala Say? Boy, Hemlock looks at Nala Say and says, your future, however, is less certain. And we get this really sad look on Nala Say's face. Yikes. I am guessing Nala Say does not make it out alive, and that's a bummer. What a, what a cool character. What a cool character. All right, brief pit stop, because you know I love timeline stuff. I thought this was fun when they brought up chain codes. So uh, we hear them say, uh, when Omega tries to get on the shuttle, uh, we'd like two tickets to the next shuttle, please, and they say chain codes. So what's been really fun about season three is it's had a lot of nods back to the earlier seasons. In particular, it was season one, episode two, where they first discussed chain codes. We saw uh, that no planetary travel was allowed without a chain code. They're even saying uh, all public transport is now restricted without chain codes. So basically, season one brought in this whole concept of the Empire using chain codes, and now we're seeing it come back to haunt them in season three. And then also, this is just kind of fun, but in uh, Mandalorian, season two, episode six, Boba Fett says, my chain code has been encoded in this armor for 25 years. Well, just for the fun of it, if you do the math, Mando season one and I believe two, both are around nine uh, uh, ABY. Take back 25 years, you're about 16 BBY, which is just a year later than uh, the, the Bad Batch, maybe a year and a half, somewhere around in there. So isn't it just kind of fun? The Mandalorian is making references back to Bad Batch. Bad Batch is making references to Ahsoka, on and on and on. They're really tying this all together so well. I just think it's fun. All right, question number five. 
how exactly is Omega so good at strategy? Crosshair says, so that's your plan? You want to hustle someone? And Omega says, I've done it before, and I prefer to think of it as a temporary requisition of funds. Well, yes, indeed, she has done it before, and this is another example of tying back to something from earlier seasons, in this case, season one, episode 10, where she basically said, it's a strategy game, and I'm good at strategy. And of course, she wins a bunch of money for Sid, pays off some of the Bad Batch's debt. Uh, it's a great episode. But this was the first time we saw her doing it, and then now again, we see her doing really good at cards here. So you think you're good at this game, the captain says. So what is up with this? You know, an easy answer is she's force sensitive, but what in particular about being force sensitive is allowing her to, to know what to do to win these games? Very interesting. So I hope we get this answer. They're definitely hinting at it uh, and tying again back to season one. All right, question number six. Will Crosshair ever understand what loyalty means? I love when he says, forget the hound, we have to get off this planet, and Omega strikes right back with, I'm not abandoning her. Now, what I almost wish Omega would have said was, and I also didn't abandon you. <laughs> I mean, Crosshair just is so selfish. It's not dawning on him. The only reason he's free is because Omega was not willing to abandon him. So now she's not willing to abandon the beast. So yeah, Batcher. So yeah, I, I, it seems like Crosshair is finally turning a little bit more selfless instead of selfish, but we'll see. We'll see if he makes that transition. All right, question number seven. What exactly are the Empire's plans for all of these animals? Notice all the animals they let escape, uh, creatures chittering and growling. Uh, they go flying by, running people over. What's going on here? Why, why did they have all those animals? Why would they care? I don't think the Empire cares about a zoo. <laughs> no, something is really going on. And this reminds me of the previous episode where they talked about the exotic matter facilities have expanded providing alteration and testing of much larger assets. And we saw one of those assets um, from uh, season two with the Zilla Beast, right? So once again, we're getting these ties back to previous episodes, but I'm wondering what else does the Empire have in mind? What are all of these experiments on these animals? So very, very interesting question. I hope we get that answer. And it kind of ties to this. Notice the captain there getting pulled in by this nasty creature. And you gotta wonder, are we being mentally prepared for a really high death count? Because th this was pretty gruesome. This dude just gets pulled in. He grabs the doors, but the doors get pulled closed, and they even leave us with Captain Screaming. Interesting, right? So it's another one of those animals. So it's leading back to my previous question of what's the Empire doing here with all this experimentation? But I'm also wondering if they are preparing us for the fact that this season, anybody can die. In fact, speaking of anybody, how about this random death, or so it seems, right? As the ship is taking off, that stormtrooper sticks his head up, and then you just, this was not even necessary for them to do this. But you see the guy's face, like, you know that if a helmet was off, he's going, oh yeah, it's over. <laughs> I've wasted my life. Because the, the, um, the jet fuel, or, or the jet engines blasting his head, and then you see him just flying off there, off the podium, as this says, stormtrooper shrieks. What is going on? I mean, both of those deaths were very, very disturbing and unnecessary. So I'm wondering, does that mean several of the Bad Batch ain't going to make it either? Yikes. This is looking to be a very, very high death count season. All right, question number nine. Exactly which bounty hunters will be coming after the Batch? This answer I know we're going to get, and sooner than later, because Hemlock says track the ship and notify all of our App operatives. I'm assuming an operative is bounty hunters, right? And he says, I want her found. So yeah, this is probably where Saj Ventress, who's been rumored to be in this season, may be coming in. Um, Fennec Chan is supposed to be in this season. So yeah, I think the, the bounty hunters are coming sooner than later. Uh, one last little pit stop before we get to the final question. Let's talk timeline again. So I've been really trying to figure out exactly how much time is there between um, uh, season two and season three. And uh, Echo found that really good example of uh, the number of days being marked down by Omega, which moved about six months, if I remember right. Uh, and then here we get another reinforcement that it's been many, many months because Crosshair says it, it's been months. You don't know they're still alive. And uh, Echo, or um, sorry, <laughs> Echo. hey Echo, you made it in the video again. And Omega says, they'll be there, referring to the other members of the Bad Batch. So yeah, it's been many months, it seems. 
Uh, then we also get this uh, comment from Wrecker when he says, we crossed the galaxy four times looking for you. Now, he may have been inflating that number. In fact, in fact um, Hunter says, no, it was five. But the point is, it's been a while. It's really been a while. So I'm going to stick with 19 to 17 BBY, although I did have several people in the comments say probably it's only 18 right now, but it'll be 17 by the end of the season. So we'll see. Uh, I think that that works. Uh, I don't think they're going to get any closer, though, to Solo. We're going to be several years gap between the end of Bad Batch and when Solo happens. All right, so question number 10. How is this reunion going to turn out? One of the most interesting cliffhangers we've had in a while. Uh, yeah, man. Um, Crosshair, Hunter, and Wrecker. There are going to be some sparks, some sparks flying. We know we're going to get this question answered, probably the opening scene of, of next episode, and I cannot wait. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. And then, hey, bonus question, are we ready to shed a tear for the end of the Bad Batch? I couldn't help but wonder if Omega hugging Hunter, you know, hugging Wrecker, was almost like us hugging them. Now, of course, she was so glad to see them again, but are we essentially hugging them goodbye? I fear so. I really fear. After, the, after, the, after that captain and that stormtrooper were demolished for no apparent reason, I do think we're going to lose at least Hunter and Wrecker, probably Crosshair as well. They're all going to be gone. Oh, this is going to be a heartbreaking season. But so there you go. Those are 10 questions that I want to see answered before this uh, series ends. Should be an awesome season, right? It looks like um, uh, the return coming next week. And then we get two episodes, two uh, the, the, the following week. So very, very cool. All right. Don't forget February contest. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, win a book or a steel book. And of course, we have the membership option. And love to have you on Discord. Here's the Star Wars spoilers chat where we're talking about episode four being peak. And, and I cannot wait for it to hit the fan, as uh, Ileana says. So yeah, I will leave a pinned comment. You can join the Discord, join the conversation. Uh, over 1,200 members across the globe, always a conversation happening 24-7. Love to have you. And also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we'll all continue to enjoy the final season of Bad Batch.